Hello and welcome to a brand new year of Punter's Guide, the first of 2023. And of course, we'll be building up to the Cheltenham Festival in just two and a half months' time. Uh, Frankie and Joel alongside me, as always. Happy New Year to you, uh, gents. We'll start with you first, Joel. It's a bit of a quiet start to the year, but it usually is, isn't it, this first weekend? Yeah, I mean, the race to win counts is not great, but I think I've got three quality uh, selections there. I know your map goes there as well. Uh, Sandown's all right. Tall was great. And um, while I've been doing all the Zoom calls over Christmas, I've been practising me uh, whip hand in the forehand position uh, with my <laughs> paper that's left over. I'll tell you what, it is hard to do, you know. It's hard to do, but I've just nailed it. Now they've changed the rules back. So uh, I've got uh, I've got me, uh, me big one and my little one. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's, it's it's I'm a knife as well, just in case I get really bored. It's really hard to do that, you know. It's a fair play to jocks. That's an insight into Joel's Christmas, uh, Frankie. Um, we've got the veterans <laughs> chase about the final, of course. Great series, this as well. Oh yeah, I'm I uh, I enjoy the veteran races. Some people they're not a fan and they like to have you know they always talk about the young, exciting horses. But these old handicappers that have been around for a while and they plod away and you get these staying three mile veteran chases. I love them. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'd say the veterans handicap, that's where you're really delving in and trying to find something you like. And then you've got the toll work, which is the, the talking point and the exciting horses. So we've got a bit of everything and, and a few, uh, a few at Wing Canton to, to have a, a poke at, but as Joel said, it's probably, probably more exciting to see Sandown this weekend. Yeah, it's usually grueling and testing around the dew. Quite a lot of rain on the uh, Saturday morning as well. That's about 10 mil, so it's going to be quite testing. We'll start with the 115 then at Sandown. Two and a half mile handicap chase where the ground gets testing. The call for Venetia Williams. He's got a very interesting runner in this first. Gemma Randy, who was a good winner when we last saw him. Yeah, I'm I'm torn here. And I, I don't know if I'm going to make the same thing. So I was hoping Joel might go first in because... Joel, you put up one of Venetia's, um, that was a similar story the other week that went and won. Um, won nicely last time out, got hiked up a little bit in the race, uh, in the weights you stuck with, and it did go and win. I'm wondering if you're doing the same, because um, the favourite does look quite strong here. As you mentioned, it will be sloppy round Sandown, and a bit of boost of form. Our Jet, who uh, Gemma Rande beat last time out, has gone and won since as well. So there is a confident vote for the favourite, but Having big that up on the, you know, to give myself something to fall back on if it goes and wins, I'm going to go against it. Um, or at least I'm going to look for an each way play because seven to four is fairly short. Um, Skippy on, I think, is good value in the race to play each way. Uh, this horse was a decent hurdler and I thought looked really exciting, albeit coming third um, on Chase Davey at Etoxeter over two miles, six and a half furlong. I think that was just a little bit too far. And probably until the two and a half mile point, travelled really well, jumped really well and just didn't quite stay on. Um, I think this horse is, is got a lot more than it showed on Chase debut or, or maybe a lot more than third suggests. And I know that Tom Lacey is quite excited about this horse as well. And as I said, decent hurdling career, took defence as well, I think has more to offer at an each way price. Yeah, yeah. Ship you on at each way price, right? The uh, makeshift whips are down, the glasses are on. Joel, 115, what do we fancy with Venetia again? No, against Felicia in this one, especially after, you know, Charlie Joyce had been bigging him up for so long and being the best jock over fences yesterday. He gave that a uh, shocker for 2% last day. Did you see that that, that, that uh, race yesterday that Sean Bowen won? Yeah. Uh, oh, just, uh, oh. I mean, that, mate, no. I'm done. I'm done. A line through Venetia, a line through Charlie George, uh, Deutsch. I think um, PJB is the one for money. However, I've got one here, certainly red. Certainly red for uh, Lydia Richards and Mark Goldstein. Um, one at the start of December by 17 lengths at Wincanton on Good to Soft was non run on New Year's Day, on New Year's Eve rather, uh, at Newbury. Now, do you know uh, a quiz question, first one of the year, who this horse was second to on debut at Kempton? Enlighten us. Shiskin. I uh, was nearly quick enough on my racing coach. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, all, all winds have been around three miles on good, good soft ground. I think it's going to be uh, the soft side of uh, soft. Um, so I think uh, certainly red. I think it's on the mark of uh, one, two, seven, something like that. Um, yeah. and it's, a, it's, a, it's a decent one for me. And I think because of the jockey and the trainer. Um, and by the way, I was looking at a website last night. If she wins this, please, 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 Lydia, invest some money on your website. 
<laughs> hint, hint, hint. Right, we'll stick with you with the 150 as well then. Uh, two more handicap trees. I do love the last day. There's a bit of a turn at Aintree in the spring, but he's not getting any younger, just turned uh, 11. We send also sends one a long way south. We must have a good chance, Corrigan Rock. And your old mate Sam Thomas has got Grey Diamond, Joel. Yeah, Corrigan Rock, I think it's up nine pounds. Um, I think it'll try and make all. I think it's probably at its peak now. Um, but the owners of Corrigan Rock are, are they're, 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 I think they're Sandown um, members uh, and they love one down there. So I'll expect that to go really, really well. But I think it'll come up short. And it's a Saturday, and it's Sam, and it's Sam. It's a Sammy Twist and Davis and a Sam Thomas to double on here. Uh, great diamond for me, last seen in November in that looking brilliant handicap. Uh, that channel form for me is is, is pretty decent. Was third to Amarillo Sky and um, Fugitive. Um, break, beat the three lengths at the, the, um, at the finish. Probably could have finished second. Before that, uh, to quote you, jump like a fridge. Uh, I think Jack Tudor was on that day at Wing Canton. It's been dropped four pounds. I think it's uh, one three three now. Uh, and let's get the new year off with a Sam Thompson, Sam Twist, and Davis double on Grey Diamond. And celebrating in the other screen there, Frankie. I take you all with Grey Diamond as well. Yep, the Sam Thomas fan club continues. Um, but I mean, ticks so many boxes uh, as one round. That's Sam Down the four. Four. It's Um has placed on heavy ground at Sandown before. That Cheltenham form, like you said, Joel, Fugitive and Amarillo Sky have gone on one since. And it's been eased in the weights. It looks a gift, this. Um, yeah, Grey Diamond. Grey Diamond for Frankie. Grey Diamond for Joel. Unanimous then. I'm with Corrigan Rock, just to be a little bit different. Let's look at the tall worth. We'll start with you this time, uh, Frankie. Uh, it's going to be grueling for some of these. Henry de Bromhead sends over Arc to Brazil. Gary Moore been waxing lyrical about authorised speed. We know Tamura looked pretty useful as well for Paul Nichols. No Philly been singing that one's uh, praises. Uh, I'm not sure we've got another Constitution Hill in here this year, but what wins the tall worth? I think this, for me, comes down to ground, track and ground. Um, the four, the three or four at the top of the market are all exciting. Um, Henry's is the unknown one. And, you know, if Henry and Rachel Blackmore go and win this race, then it wouldn't be the biggest surprise in the world, would it? But after what we know, I wouldn't be uh, backing. Tamora's very impressive. And I think one that's overpriced potentially, if you look at that, is Lastro Boy, who beat Tamora mm -hmm. in a bumper um, and looks really push button, just hasn't quite had the experience, but definitely has some ability. And if you were looking at Tamora's, I think I'd urge you to have a little. Uh, each way play on the Lastro boy as well. But for me, as I said at the start, it comes down to the track, comes down to the ground. 225 on Saturday, it is going to be pretty testing conditions and authorised speed. Having that fifth on that horrendous day at the festival behind Fasal Vega um, on what was just horrible ground. And then winning uh, both starts this year with this season on soft and the last day being at Sandown on what was testing ground that day, he just gallops and gallops and gallops, turn home at Sandown, that long straight that they get. Yes, he's got to jump better, but he should do for another run and for some more schooling at home. He's the one that stands out to me that has the most ability, the most speed um, and can do it on in these conditions. So authorised speed for the Moors. Me. Yeah, Moore's used to having some big winners at Sandown as well. Uh, Joel, are you, do you agree with the authorised speed? It's a great renewal, isn't it? Six, it's, for the yeah. eight, eight of one last time out as well. It looks a real good renewal at all. Yeah, we've got eight, the dead eight here as well. I think out of the top three, authorised speed is the one. Uh, don't like the uh, North Philly Racing Horse. It's a drifting. Uh, Arctic Brazil looked brilliant on the telly, uh, watching it in Ireland last time. Don't know what it's beat, but... I'm not sure I'd touch one of Henry de horses because they don't travel when they come over here at the minute. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's the... I just don't think they're travelling uh, when, they, when they come over. So line through those two. Um, I'm going down uh, to a 20 to one shot. Um, Nearman Lyon for Kerry Lee and uh, our Pat's old uh, Richard Patrick. He's come from the cold and he's coming in here now. So this is the horse that um, Kerry Lee got from Andre Favre in uh, October. Uh, it ran a five runner race uh, on the flat at Doncaster on heavy ground. It was beating 60 plus lengths. Look, it was never going to do anything. It was just seeing what we've got there. It was given a Rab Havlin special. Um, then one of Merton Hurdle, um, Hereford on good to soft at 14. <laughs> uh, beating up that lighting up Nigel by two. 10, uh, then beating at Haydock end of November by three lengths um, by the Fergal O'Brien hot pot, Holland back. 
Uh, it's a, look, it's a massive step up, I think. The eight runners, 22 on. Um, you know, it's got to run into a place if you don't like the uh, the other two after authorised speed. Um, 22 on, you know, the RPAX is coming back in the good books. Yeah, I'm going to tell you because I was caught up with Tom Lee this week. He's been in the studio and, and he's said, look, it's worth a go. I mean, if the ground can't be soft enough for him, it's going to be desperate. So if he can run into a place, they'll be absolutely delighted. But they're rolling the dice and they're going to have a go. And he's been nibbled at in the market. So I certainly won't put you off in the me and line each way. But right, we'll stick with you, Joel. You are the veteran of this show. So let's have a look at the veterans with you first. The three o'clock <laughs> It's a great renewal, isn't it? Prime Venture won it last year. Probably a little bit of a deeper renewal, a bit of more high-class uh, opposition this time round, but he's clearly been aimed at the race. Ramsey Zatayi, who was a high-class uh, youngster, he uh, looks like he's off, uh, off favour, but he's also top weight. Big field, heavy ground, veterans chase. You can have a couple if you like. Yeah, it's, it's set up for this. So I've, I've got a couple here. Um, do you remember Wishing and Hoping? I think you were on a holiday that, that week. And I did the show with somebody else. I put it up in February at Warwick at 22 to 1. It was beaten on the line um, for Mel Rowley and uh, Alex Edwards. Uh, it will try and, it'll try and make all. Keeps going, keeps going, and keeps going. I think it was done half a length by the favour. I think Tom, was it Tommy Bryan who was uh, riding it last time? I don't, don't know, whatever. Anyway, that's the one for me, wishing and hoping. But Shambard as well, uh, around 25, 33 to 1 for Venetia and Lucy Turner, claims a five. Won the Camure at 40 to 1. You've got to remember that. Uh, it ran at Haydock end of November. Absolutely hated it, as we all say. It was looking round at Scousers. It was looking round at Manx. It absolutely hated it. It was pulled up. Look, uh, 2022, forget the grade. You know, uh, l- look at this. One second, second, one, 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 pulled up. Uh, and, it, it, you know, you can have as many stabs as you want. Uh, Bally Andy as well, if I'm a third. Love that horse. Um, but I think Shambard, what, what price are we on Shambard? It must be around 25, 30. Yeah, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 25, yeah. 2025, that's a really, really... To be fair, 2025 is the year it'll probably finish the race. But uh, no, Shambhal at 25-1 to 1 and wishing and hoping as well. Split mistakes on those each way. There we are. Yeah, well, five places each way on the Veterans final. You fancy a couple of stabs, uh, Frankie? Yep, I'm going to play two here. Um, I think you've got to have a look at Snow Leopard S. I think this is slightly weaker oh, opposition. On! <laughs> What's your excuse, Joel? Why not? I know that the, the last three weeks, eight pulled up and pulled up, but there's Come on, Joel, we know Frankie there, loves a mare. Sure. <laughs> yeah, here we do, yeah. <laughs> Especially a grey old one. <laughs> I knew that was going. Uh, well, that, that's that's my... Um, not not that she's grey and she's old. That's not my argument for her, but... <laughs> um, if you she do the go ground. back... There, yeah, exactly. I mean, I was there when she won an entry on that. That was another absolutely savage day. Um, then went on to win extra, and then, as I said, since that pulled up in the national, pulled up at Warwick, and then only eight last time out um, in the Beecher. But testing conditions, slight ease in the weights to one four two. I think slightly weaker or a, a lesser race than what she's been pulled up in. Um, I know she's got to complete this race, but she did last time at Atrium, entry in the beach, and provided that she's back to a little bit of form, I, th- I think it's well worth an each way play. The other, I'm sure you'll be on side here, Joel, Lily Pinchin. You're a big fan, um, and she's oh. in good form. She rides Saint Javier. Um, I think another with a great chance. Done plenty of racing over in France, um, but if you look at the form here, it's decent enough. And after a little bit of a break, fourth at Cheltenham when Lily rode this horse and then one last time out at Haydock again, Lily rode and was really easy um, or finished the race really well at Haydock, which you want to see in these veterans. You want to see them finish their races and look like they're still enjoying their racing. And St. Javier definitely did. So I quite fancy um, St. Javier with, with Lily Pinch and taking three off. That'd probably be the main selection. But I just think it's not a little best. It's, it's hard to ignore for me. So I'd probably play the pair of them each way. It's interesting you mentioned that because she rode Lily Pinch, rode Valadon in this race last year. She went off miles in front, didn't she? And to fair, did well to finish fifth. Well, like you're going to stop coming to her and set it up for Prime Venture. So lots of comparisons from that uh, year into this year as well. But we'll stick with you, Frankie, because you've got the lucky last 3.35. There's going to be plenty of divots by the time they get round to this. It'll be really, really soft. Venetia has got a really likely race contender, Giello. He was beaten last time by a good horse, don't get me wrong, at Haydog. Uh, was trying to make it take advantage of, uh, of a penalty, sort of the hike in the way it's going to get, because dotted up at Exeter. And a lot of people fancy Jello in the last, but it looks a competitive little renewal. Does he? I'm going to stick with the, the oldies. 
um, lightly squeeze the nine-year-old, that's probably what might put you against this whole. Joel's laughing at me. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm just carry on. <laughs> um, again, you've got to go back to 2020, 2021 to find the, the best bits of form. But you know, this horse was uh, racing in. Uh, we've tried in three class ones on the bounce, and one of which <clears throat> third behind, not so steepy and buzz. Had a couple of dodgy races over in France and then came back after a 532-day break and looked really, really in good form at Kempton last time out. Um, a hike in the weights off the back of that, but nowhere near career high mark if you go back to what this horse had been doing previously. And I just think for a horse that's come back from a 500-day break, looked in such good form, um, that maybe there is still more to offer or well, not more to offer than it has done in its career but at the point that it's measured at right now um looks in good form lightly squeezed right squeeze for harry fry and brian carver the lucky last you were laughing is that because you're with him or dead against him joel i'm dead against him lightly squeeze will bounce uh and i'm not again and i'm completely against the venetia horse as well i mean let's be honest you've, you know, re- you've been you, did, did you have a bet on yesterday <laughs> Why? <laughs> I mean, really, really, really excited. Yeah, you know what? I may have done. I may have done. I'm, the Venetia, Venetia is on the list. She's back on the list. As is Charlie Deutsch. He's gone from the best jockey <laughs> over jumps to he's not even. He's not even part of my life anymore. And I also, Venetia. Say, you can't. You know, what, no, Venetia, why would you pay 140 grand for a horse <laughs> that, that, that won a bad race in France with a tongue tie and head, headgear on first time? It's come out here, gets beat at one to three. All right, there was excuses. Line through that. Right, this is nap time. This is the best bet the in this race. 3.35, the tracker horse of all time. All I will say is, look at the race at Ascot in November. In the air for the Moors. It was given a bigger Langadan ride than Langadan, right? A non-runner at Sandown, start of December. It was back from 28 to 1 into 6 to 1 and was withdrawn with a self-search. We're on. And what price are we now? 13 to 2. It's shortening, yeah. What are you want at? Fives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on it's a 10s. Yeah, no. Yeah, I'll tell you what, yeah. It's a fair shout. He's got some good chances, hasn't he, Gary Moore? But the odds on favour yeah. in the opening, author has to be in the top with he can end the car with a winner uh, then with in the air. Right, off to win Canton. Before we do, why is the whole industry saying how good that ride was with Sean Bowen? You're the only one who says it was a bad ride from Charlie Deutsch. It was a brilliant ride by Sean Bowen. It was an absolutely brilliant ride by Sean Bowen, but it was also one of the worst rides I've ever seen. Right, it was one of the best rides for 98%, but just at the line, a fan paper between them, he said, you know, you know, the amount of winners I've ridden from my armchair, I need to sort this lad out, I tell you. <laughs> and you've got the whip action going as well. well. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, I'll tell you what, you take the whip away from Sean Bowen in that race and he wouldn't have won. <laughs> right, let's go to Encanton then down in the uh, in the West Country, the 132 and a half mile handicap. There's only six go here. The one for me that's really eye-catching, not suggesting it's going to be the day, but what's interesting in the market is Mezai de Zobo, former grade one winner, won a grade two, being protector out, of course. Not been seen, though, for almost exactly uh, a year. Frankie, we'll start with you in this. It's a good contest, this, despite just the six going to post. It is, yeah. And I'm, I'm looking really at the top and the bottom of the market. Oh, slight movement now for Magic Saint. But um, Celebra Dallin, the favourite. This does look an ideal race for this horse. It ticks a lot of boxes back to two and a half um, after a seasonal opener at three, finishing uh, fourth. Back to soft ground, or good to soft, but I think you will probably be looking at soft uh, come Saturday. Um, And a slight ease in the weights as well. So I'd say the favourite does look strong. I've had to try and get a beat there. The young Freddie Jingle, um, or Gingle, however, whichever way round you want to go there. Magic Saint um, has been rated in the 150s, putting some massive performances. Again, if you go back far enough. Um, but hasn't exactly been out of form of recent, just has been running in pretty competitive handicaps, a number of um, very competitive class one handicaps at Cheltenham. And although it hasn't been placing, hasn't been miles off, uh, the young lad Freddie takes off seven. For a horse that has been in the 150s and is running consistently for one, four, three, the seven pound claimer, I think it's got to be in with a squeak. It's just a shame there's only six. 
because what I want to play this each way for two places, I'm unsure. So that's what makes me come back to the favourite. But they'd be my my two. Um, we'll we'll go each way. Magic Saint we'll to be the first two. Nichols at his local track, Joel. Strong, strong, strong on the favourite. Philip Hobbs won this three times since 2015. Could have gone to the veterans' chase. Uh, this finished fifth in the plate at the festival. Uh, stolen silver uh, was only two lengths in front of him that day. Uh, I think this is really, really strong. Money's coming. I think it, it, it says to me, instead of going veterans chase and getting uh, done once again, let's go here. I, I'm really, really strong on the fave. For a trainer, I'm not a massive fan of. Philip Hobbs, Tom O'Brien takes the mount. Very on, Slubber Dalen. For you. Right, let's have a look at the 205 then. Down to two miles. Handicap chase seven. Go to post. Uh, Venetia was the favourite again, Joel. Mm, uh, I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, another crick. <laughs> another crick. Strong on this. Noel Williams, Tom O'Brien. Uh, um, Colson distance winner. Blinkers on. Uh, and the most interesting thing for me is uh, Tom O'Brien uh, has got off Midnight Midge. Look, I know he's I know he's read, read another crick many times, but um, I think he'd probably have the choice. Three pound lower than winning this last year. Down to one one nine. Given a couple of quietish runs, you know, one with Brendan Powell on, one one with Tom there doing his knitting, uh, and now we're back on uh, three pounds lower than last year. Course and distance winner. Blinkers on another crick strong. Frankie's nodding. Same as. Couldn't have said it better, Joel. Exactly the same. Um, there, there's not this for me. This actually came down to a bit of a process of elimination um, to fall on this horse. I wouldn't say it's the most exciting race we got on Saturday, but as Joel said, course and distance when a slight ease in the weights. Tom O'Brien is quite interesting if he if he did get the choice, which he probably did. Um, yeah, come back here and do it again. This is where my nap is. Oh, it's not oh go on, go on. <laughs> Destiny has to be taken on. One at Ludlow two starts ago. Even I could have won that one. The, the others didn't jump and did hate you the ground. Then just hung on last time out at Ludlow, scraped in from the fast finishing 18 year old Bundoran. Gone up to the four pounds. He's never won off a mark this high. He's 10 years old. Has to be taken on. Cato the King, questions to answer. Native Robin, just turned 13, loves it at Wing Canter, but questions to answer. Midnight Midge, handicapper in charge. Uh, another crick, I hear you. Blinker's on for the first time, but he is 10. Uh, and not available. Fair third last time out was disappointed before that. Intern de Civilla is my nap of the day. Jane Williams in form. Two, two starts over fences. Third at Warwick behind Stage Star and West Cork. Went out the back over two and a half mile. 13 pound at the handicap at Foss Lass. Never put in the race out the back trying to get him to settle. He's a free going sort. He's four pound lower than his win. Last win over hurdles at Stratford on a fast track. Down to two miles. Wind him up, let him go. See you later. Here's my backside. Follow it home. <laughs> Mate, it's a non-runner. <laughs> <laughs> Just coming now. Non-runner. Right, shut up. Anyway, we will find out. One of good us will be wrong. Good case. <laughs> That'll make a very good case. Right, only four goes post with 315. And a lot of people have been looking at this Keante Classic. Uh, Classico could be very well handicapped off 131. Could be one of the, uh, the better charges at Kim Bailey's yard. Uh, that is the rumour, Joel. Odds on favourite wins, the lucky last at Wincanton? Yeah, I wrote this down last night. Uh, 131, why is it 10 to 11? God, this morning it's 8 to 13. <laughs> that's that's what I wrote. Of 131, smash Nicky's Park Hill Dancer, eight and a half lengths at Market Raisin. 11 to 10 last night. Oh, I'm going to go to bed. Wake up this morning, it's 8 to 13. Why was this odds on? Um, I, I haven't seen anybody or spoken to anybody that thinks this is not a good thing of the weekend 8 to 13 now miss the 11 to 10 yeah I'm very tend to agree not an odds on backer but looks a good thing Frankie it does yeah it's hard to get get a beat really and the market tells us that as well um, yeah you'd, you'd be surprised if it doesn't win I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be backing it myself uh, at the price it is now well, is it too big for you um, or too, even... too, too big price for you isn't it <laughs> <laughs> or even or even chucking it in an acro, I don't think. I don't think it's quite that territory. But I wouldn't say it's a good thing, as Joel said. I wouldn't be as confident. You've got Nichols in here. I know that this horse has probably just been tried around to go chasing again over hurdles, but that's that was a, that was fifth in the triumph and, and ran in the Greatwood at the festival two years on the trot. It's obviously got some ability, but I'd imagine Nichols has got other plans for it besides winning this uh <laughs> this hurdle race. But the horse does have ability, so Hence, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be calling the favourite a good thing, but yeah, probably your most likely winner is that trick. All right, nap time. You know, mine's in turn to Civil Earth, made a very strong case for him at Wayne Canton. Uh, Frankie, 
what are you going for, best bet? Have a guess. I can't remember what you've tipped up, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you only need to remember the. You, you only need to remember the trainer. <laughs> Grey oh, Diamond. Yeah, Sam Thomas. Yeah, yeah, Sam Thomas. Grey Diamond in the one fifty at Sandown. Like I said, Cheltenham form the first and second have both gone on to win. He's won round Sandown before. He's one on soft. He's placed on heavy here. It's Sam Thomas in a handicap with Sammy Twiston on board. Looks, looks a good thing, Joel. Joel, where's your nap? Sprint Valley? Uh, sprint, no, no, we're not going there. We're going Turpentine again. You know, back to South Africa. It's a new season. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, 335 in the air. Uh, around 13 to 2 for the Moors. Um, and also tomorrow, big price football bet. Uh, it's been backed as well. Blackpool to beat Forest in the FA Cup tomorrow. That's my football bet, and that's why I'm not coming here. Can we have a can we have a what would the treble pay for the for 13 to 2 in the air? Um, your dog at uh, <laughs> wherever it is, and Frank is loving with Sam Thomas. Because what we should do here, have a tenner each way, uh, treble on this. And if it comes in, we'll sponsor Lily Pynchon. She's still looking for a sponsor for a britches. And we'll just have Bet Fred punter's guide on. You can be on the left cheek. I'll be the right cheek. <laughs> just have Frankie Foster down the middle. It's very like to be. 150 on. to 1. 150 to 1. She'd take that, wouldn't she? She'd take that. A couple of grand. A couple of grand. Get it on. And don't forget, because it'll win. Taking Frankie Foster down the middle. There's a line. I'm not going to be able to get out of my head. Uh, right. Don't forget. From Monday, these two guys are going to join us again, looking ahead towards the festival. I'll build up to uh, Cheltenham, the road to Cheltenham series starts on Monday. So make sure you join us then. And fingers crossed, yeah, have a little each way treble uh, on those three that we have uh, put up as well. Well worth uh, having I'm out going to. Yeah. Going to, he's going to. Now he's doing it right now. Enjoy now. the weekend. Best of luck whenever you're back in. As always, please gamble responsibly. Join us Monday, of course. We'll be back next week to preview some great racing at Kempton and Warwick. Have a great weekend.